the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Father's Day is celebrated all around the world. Fathers are the backbones of our mothers. They are there to teach you the outcome of hard work. Fathers are there to t- fathers are the rock of our family. They are the stronghold. Well, they they are there to show you that resilience will, all, will all, always end up in triumph. Mothers are very tender. Make sure to treat them with love and respect. Happy Father's Day. There are three things that I appreciate about my dad. Uh, the first one is that he's always going out and looking for opportunities, things that can support me in the way that I am right now and will benefit me in the future. Things like uh, tutors for education, or if I'm interested in something like tutors for music, because I used to play piano, he's done that. Then there's also the fact that he has so much dedication and he puts so much effort into his work, as well as his family. Like, uh, he has all these books around the house that talk about how to have a healthy home, um, how to handle teenage boys, how to deal with mental health issues, all this, and his, the way he parents us and the way he works with his families, it's always evolving as he's learning and practicing to do better to support us. Then the last and final thing is that he trusts me more and more. Obviously, that's something that comes with age, but it really, it really builds on me and shows me that like this is like someone that I want to constantly be with. Like he trusts me to be responsible with the people that I make friends with. Every now and then, he he helps me to make sure that I'm on the right track, right? Uh, if I'm hanging out with people, he'll look around to make sure that, oh, they're not doing some, I guess, stupid decisions, right? They're acting responsible, doing what they need to do, and any, not anything unnecessary. He's always out there looking for me. So those are the three things I appreciate most about my dad. A Father's Journey, a Poem of Reflection. In the realm of fatherhood, a noble quest, dads embark upon aiming to their best. Active listening, a skill to know, to hear their tales, both big and long. Emotional support, a fortress of strong, where tears find solace, where fears belong. Dads be the pillar, the rock they seek, in times of joy when they feel weak. Setting boundaries, a delicate art, balancing love with rules, a tender heart. Guiding with firmness, yet with grace, in discipline they find their place. Hello and welcome to our special episode of the Dim Din Podcast. Your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions and frustrations amongst Africans in the diaspora and our relatives and friends back home. Today, we're here to talk about fathers. I, for the longest time, have run away from the term daddy's girl, because a lot of people call me that. But like about two years ago, I chose to own that term, because at first, it meant to me that I am spoiled. And now I just know it to mean I am loved. And what's wrong with that? Nothing. I am your host, Becca. And today, I have with me two fathers who are here to help me talk about the roles and responsibilities of father and just acknowledge fathers for all the amazing work that they do for us. If you know me, you know I talk about my father all the time. This is a special episode that is dedicated to my father, Mr. Patrick Bio Cisse, and the fathers that are here with me today and all other fathers out there. Today, to have this conversation with me, I have two amazing guests, one from the South um, Sudanese community and another one from the Sierra Leone community. On my near right here, I have Mr. Joseph Laurie, who is a father, has parented in South Sudan and is parenting three boys in uh, um, Canada here with the oldest being about 20 so? 26. 26 years old and the youngest 13, and on the far right there, we have Mr. Captain Musa from Sierra Leone, who has four amazing children, four amazing children, 
and they are here today to join me for this conversation. Thank you both for coming. Thank you for Thank inviting you. us. I'll pass it over to you to tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, well, my name is Joseph Luri. As um, it was mentioned, I am a father of um, three boys and uh, from the South Sudanese community. I'm a community um, leader as well, as well as um, a, a, a natural worker within mm -hmm. the streams of our own African communities. Absolutely. Lovely to have you. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Captain. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Captain Musa. Um, I'm a father to four beautiful, amazing kids that God blessed me with. Um, my experience as a father has been great, and I love it. Um, with the willing and guidance of God. Um, it's been great so far. So I will stop here for now. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah. wonderful. Okay, and what do you do for work? Um, I'm a construction worker, um, a superintendent. Um, yeah, and by the way, I'm the first black African in Canada to hold that position since 2016. Hey. And I have paved the way for a lot of people. So by the way, I like that. Congratulations yeah. to you, sir. Yeah. Okay, now that we've met our guest, let's go on to the theme of the day. Some fathers believe that it is the mother's um, role to love and care for the children in the home while they focus on providing for the home and protecting the children. Mr. Joseph, would you say this is a misconception or reality? Well, I would say pa parenting is a responsibility. And as being a responsibility, it takes two to really parent the children very well because the two are coming with different styles of parenting, different approaches. And so it is the responsibility of the two parents to get involved in nurturing, in giving the love, and also uh, providing. Um, mom could play a larger role in nurturing and as well as in providing love. But the dad, I would do expect the dad as myself to be wholly involved because our influences are quite different. And so if nurturing and loving is left to mom and only the dad is, the dad's role is to provide on the table, mm -hmm. um, that would not be different from an absent father who is just paying child support. And mm. so your presence is your influence. Your influence is building skills in that child. And there are things they can copy from you. But if you are not going to be there, you are working to provide. There's nothing they are copying and you've got nothing to provide. And so to me, it takes the two to parent very well. And that is why we say when the two couples are together and they're parenting together and they're providing together, mm -hmm. they are going to have more confident and successful kids. Aye. Our fathers in the diaspora and in Africa, I hope you have your ears open. Thank you so much. Um, mm. What I hear you say then is that it, it is largely a misconception as both parents are needed to parent the children in all areas because they have different influences. Yes, I would say yes. It, in, in, um, it, is, it is a misconception if we say mom has to provide love and nurture, but mm -hmm. dad has to provide on the table. Wonderful. That is a misconception because in reality, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the output and the outcomes are not going to match to the two parents being together. Beautiful, beautiful. Over to you, Mr. Kamara. Well, would you say it's a misconception or reality? I would say both, but I would stick more to the misconception. Okay. okay? Um, as for me, I think um, a father has to involve, say, sixty percent, not just as, or not just provide for the for the children mm -hmm. so as a role too, because there's a saying, apple does not fall far from its trees, you know, because mm -hmm. father needs to involve by like, nurturing children, right? Mm -hmm. Because we think father thinks more logical, no disrespect to the woman, where a woman's uh, mother thinks more emotional and then emotional. So that's why when involve um, the father, not just providing but the role, because your kids definitely copy from you. So mm -hmm. when, when your father get involved more into the children's life, trust me, 95% of that kid, of that child be, 
end up being successful than as just the mother, you know? And it, again, you, both parents need to work collectively to raise their children. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Though, on behalf of the Women Association, we're probably coming for you at some point, <laughs> but no problem. No, I really, I'm like, no disrespect. Beautiful, <laughs> no. though. No disrespect. Yeah, Thank you very logic, much. You know? <laughs> And I would agree with you both, because like I said, my dad is a very present figure in my life, and you see how I'm turning out. I've got a long, a much long way to go, but I really, I really do appreciate my dad for the person that I am today, because he's the foundation to all of that. So I absolutely do agree with both of you. Now, going back to sort of like where you got your parenting influences from, would you say, like, how would you say you being in South Sudan and how you were parented influenced your parenting style? Well, my being in South Sudan and being parented also in South Sudan, mm -hmm. as well as myself beginning parenting there, mm -hmm. I would say um, has had a bigger influence on me. Okay. Because the influence that we have seen is, it's usually about what uh, parenting styles that the parents are using and how have their children done if the children have largely been successful by being confident by being academically su successful and many other things and then people look to those as the best examples of parenting mm -hmm. and so I always tell people I said I have had two kind of uh, or experienced two kinds of parenting styles mm -hmm. uh, one is that of being authoritative parent who mm. always allows me to try but also sets up you know high expectations mm -hmm. and my mom who was always authoritarian mm. and who would tell you that this is the way to go and not that way otherwise these are the consequences mm, your uh, mom. I, I don't know if you would have survived with children's services in this part <laughs> of the world but She's always built clear boundaries and clear expectations. Mm -hmm. But my dad is always a guy who sits back and says, well, if you have done anything that is not right in what we think, and then let's sit around the table and dialogue about that. Explain to me what, why you did that and how you think it is right. And so those are the influences I've had. My dad was always a cool one mm -hmm. who, you know, talks and pushes you towards you providing reasons as to why you are doing A, B, C. My mom is always one who says, you get the consequences of doing A, B, C. And mm. so these two parenting styles have uh, influenced me. But because of rules and regulations that have come into the family, I think the authoritarian style wouldn't survive here and it wouldn't do good to the, good, to the kids. Mm -hmm. And so as a consequence, I also copied a bit of some combination, but mainly the authoritative one, which where you set clear goals, expectations, allow the kids also to try, and if they don't get it right, you sit around to dialogue. Mm. So those, those are the influences I've had. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes. It's very interesting, because I hear you say then that mom was the bad cop and dad was the good cop. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> mom was not a bad cop. Uh, mom, mom was not a bad cop, because that, that was the style expected out of my mom in that particular environment. Really? That she's always the one who would really be <laughs> pushing to say, the discipline is here, you get it. But on this side of the world, it won't, you know, go in line with the regulations that Not are set. Not yeah, but out of it, we grew up as successful as we are Absolutely. in terms of being responsible, in terms of being confident, mm -hmm. disciplined, mm -hmm. and having the social skills. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'll come back to you then to see how you were able to manage the <laughs> cultural shock that you were exposed to here, which I'm sure was a transition for you. But before that, to you, Mr. Kamara, um, how, how would you say that the diaspora has influenced your parenting style? Because you started parenting in the diaspora, but was parented in Africa, in Sierra Leone. So how would you say the diaspora influenced your parenting style? Um, well, the diaspora um, influenced my own parenting style. I would, I would say great because of, for example, me, I was not raised by my both parents. Um, my dad left, um, I moved to the state um, mm -hmm. to see greener pasture when I was two years, one years old or two years old. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my uncle 
raised me. So literally, I had been raised by my both parents mm -hmm. and their mom. So I would say I did not experience that um, mother right. and father, nurture, or love and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that is why at the time, I didn't want to have a kid. I didn't want to have a child. Like I'm like, no, I'm okay. I'd rather be with somebody that have a child and mm -hmm. that could be in their life and then raise that child and know how it feels to raise someone's child mm -hmm. and to just dedicate your time and love and nurture, right? Mm -hmm. And then I moved um, here and as time goes, that changed because um, all of my peer groups, you know, <laughs> they got kids, you know, I was young, everybody stopped making fun of me, oh, you should try your own child and stuff like that. Don't, don't be shooting blanks and stuff like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not shooting blanks. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, you know? At that time, I was um, uh, my ex at that time. Like, I was raising a um, hard son. Mm -hmm. And then nobody, you know, I call him my son. Mm -hmm. And up to this day, I'm not with the mom. But I still um, involved in that child um, life. life because mm -hmm. um, he was the first person to call me dad. And then so... Um, that actually, so when I got my own, um, and I held my son at the hospital, mm -hmm. um, that changed, changed all the narrative that I don't want to have a, a child. And then, mm -hmm. um, so what I did, um, I went home, went down my knees, because I pray a lot, by the way, behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, it's not just Captain all this. I pray a lot. And I'm like, God, please give me the wisdom, mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. the strengths and the, the financial so i can be here i i could be part of my my child my son life you mm -hmm. know because that opportunity that father figure i didn't have that love so i i can transcend that to him mm -hmm. and guess what and god answered that i will say to you i'm not just a good dad i'm a great dad when it comes to my kids because mm -hmm. i involve 100 mm percent -hmm. in the life because of time and um the thing I found so um, so confusing, I don't get, but the way African people raise a child, mm -hmm. I think we intend to put discipline first. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I would say the new school dad, uh, I got like four steps, mm -hmm. you know, to raise a child. Number one, um, love. Absolutely. Number two, mm -hmm. caring. Mm -hmm. You know, number three, mm -hmm. Time, time, time. Presence. I will emphasize on time, your presence. Mm -hmm. It means a lot than what you're giving that child support. Mm -hmm. The time means a lot. Mm -hmm. And respect. Mm -hmm. Respect your children. Respect your children. Mm -hmm. But listen to them. Nowadays, kids, they're way smarter than us, believe it or not. <laughs> and I know sometimes, like, they are, they are children who stop, like, but they are way smarter. Mm -hmm. Just listen to them. Sometimes, I took advice from my child. They are way smarter. Mm -hmm. they are, they're my best friend. They're always smarter. Mm -hmm. And after the discipline we comes in, it's like a man and demanding respect from a woman mm -hmm. without you showing the woman love and care. Because when you do, mm -hmm. that woman automatically will respect you and submissive to you. Mm -hmm. But you got to put in your time first to that woman and then their respect and submission will come in. At the same thing, you got to put in time and love to your child. Beautiful. The discipline will come in automatically. You don't even have to implement discipline. Beautiful. They will definitely. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Okay. So what I hear you say then is that the diaspora's influence on your parenting style is you learning how to prioritize love, care, time, and respecting your children. Yeah. Because that, that is probably not the order in which it goes in Africa, yeah. but for different reasons. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both so much. Wow. If you are just joining us, this is the Dim Dim um, podcast, and we are here conversing about the roles and responsibilities, the involvement of fathers in our lives as their children, and how that helps us to grow into better contributors in society. Okay. There is this common um, African um, adage that it takes a village to raise a child. Back in our countries of birth, we probably do have those villages, but I don't know how true that is in the diaspora. What are your thoughts about that um, adage and does it apply in the diaspora? Well, the adage that um, it takes the whole community or the village mm -hmm. to raise a child Indeed, it's true, but they have so much underlying conditions. Okay. In Africa, it was a lot more easier, 
and truly that the whole village raises the child because the values within the village allows everyone to have a responsibility look after every child as their own mm. but you also see that within that village it's it's the common people it's almost people who are either related or they have a lot of commonalities in terms of values and culture mm -hmm. now in diaspora it takes a little bit of a different turn because you may be situated in a block or five blocks that could constitute a village and so these are different people with different values and different cultures in addition to the government regulation that's a big one and so um, where i grew up in the village in south sudan my neighbor could easily punish me <laughs> my neighbor could easily question me and discipline me <laughs> for <laughs> any wrong that i would have done mm -hmm. now in the diaspora because of government re rules and regulations it becomes difficult it's abuse. in that um, <laughs> the kids would call on the police for you mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the neighbors would call on children's services for you mm. and so many other things but back home it was the aunties it was the uncles it was the neighbors who all look for the common good of the child mm -hmm. but here as we all uh, you know have the thought of common good for the child but our approaches are, dis are not the same and they are regulated by the rules around us. Yeah, and so the concept that every, it takes a whole village to raise a child, in my opinion, does not apply in, dia in diaspora. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful, yes. beautiful. So it was beneficial in Africa. back in Africa because yeah. everybody understood what their roles and responsibilities were in that regard. But here, it's like that same village tends to work against you because they don't understand where yeah. you're coming from necessarily with your parenting style. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, um, so very much. Do you want to add to that? Well, yeah, I'll get, just get a few stuff to add on that. I think in diaspora, mm -hmm. it's more of a trust issue. It is. You know. It's a big one. Because you live in this, for example, let me see, you live in the apartment, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's full of 200 people live in the apartment. Mm -hmm. um, trust me, um, you guys don't even know each other. No. Because everybody is from different Part of, of the country, world. Part mm -hmm. of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, some people live in their mother tongue, it's different, you know what I mean? So that trust issue, because we don't trust each other here. Mm -hmm. And don't know each other. We don't know each other. Mm -hmm. So me leave my child just to go out for five minutes, mm -hmm. maybe that neighbor might call the cops mm -hmm. on me that I left my child. Unattended. And, uh, but that being said, some people have that. Because some people live in a community where they know each where other, they know each other. Mm -hmm. yes. probably all from the same country mm -hmm. and speak the same language, maybe they're even a relative. Some people are lucky to have that. They could go out and leave their child and come back. That being said, the trust issue, mm -hmm. even that, we could come from the same country, know each other, but I still don't trust my child with you because I don't expect you to parent my child the way you want to print my child, and then probably think you're going to work against me. I want, to, I want you to print my child the way I print my child. Maybe that concept of way me print my child does not work for you, right? So that trust issue. So I think we don't have that luxury here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's more in Africa. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You both have touched on that so well. I have nothing to add to that. But that trust piece is definitely a big piece that keeps coming up. Yeah. And that lack of um, um, familiarity w with our neighbors is yeah. definitely embedding that trust issue. Sure. Now, um, there's an article on Medicine Heart that talks about children being raised with um, a, a single parent are more prone to mental illnesses, uh, um, alcohol abuse, and suicide attempts than children who are raised with both parents. What, in your perspective, can fathers do, whether they are with the parent or not together with the mom? Like, like whether the father is together with the mom, they're a couple or not a couple. What can they do to sort of like reduce some of the statistics for their children? Well, I think that statement, having been um, brought out from research and so on, <laughs> to some extent, is 
um, true, mm -hmm. um, not hundred percent, but to some extent on on, on a major basis. Mm -hmm. um, the absence of a dad in the life of a child impacts the child very negatively. It does because as we have all experienced here, yeah. mm -hmm. we are parented by both our parents, and not only both parents, but also we had our aunties and the uncles around us. Right, mm -hmm. and so that has added more energy yeah. and more wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so in the event that I'm parented by my mom alone and my dad is absent, mm -hmm. that would impact me, yeah. especially <coughs> as a son. And so when others talk in class, in school, or in playgrounds mm -hmm. about what their parents have done, about what dad is bringing home, and I look back and my dad is nowhere. Mm. So True. psychologically and mentally, that affects me. You feel left out. Yeah. And mom comes from work, maybe tired, she's working, you know, these two jobs or long hours mm -hmm. so that she can provide, so she can cover this gap that my dad would have taken on. So we have really no good communication. And I have nothing to copy because I don't see mom's movement in the house and in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Goes to work, she comes, tired, she has provided food on the table, she goes to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, like um, Captain has mentioned here, mm -hmm. the presence of the parents mm -hmm. giving time, time. Mm -hmm. yeah. is it's valuable absolutely. than anything. Absolutely. Because there is so much that comes out to influence the child. Mm -hmm. And so, when those children feel that, well, you know, who am I? I don't have my dad. Mm -hmm. I don't have oh, any of these parents in place. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really f feel belonging. And then they look for ways of how they can also force themselves to belong. Mm -hmm. And as they go, look for that sense of belonging, and then they fall into wrong groups mm -hmm. that feel, if we don't have that, we, we still we belong. <laughs> yeah. But we have formed our own group that has really a deficit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. so it is really significant that I'm appealing out to the parents out there mm -hmm. that regardless of the differences you have had with, with your partner, get involved in the life of your True. child. Because you bring in a positive influence. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Absolutely, <coughs> absolutely. And um, over to you, Mr. Kamara. Well, um, like Mr. Joseph just spit all, I was just going to add some sugar and <laughs> coffee, <laughs> you know, um, because I do have experience too on that, right? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, she didn't want, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's the communication. Like, you know, um, for example, I was 23 years old when I first had uh, my son, you know. So, I mean, being young, 23 years old, um, really the experience is not there. What do you know? Because mm -hmm. you just start to figure life and you want to live your own life and then you want to be a father and stuff like that, you know. It was really, really hectic, you know. But mm -hmm. like I said, I pray a lot. Um, mm -hmm. God actually gave me that wisdom of a father because, um, like, I wish I had the time, I wish I had the time to spend with my father, you know, because I remember um, 20, you know, 20, uh, 2018, 20, 2021, mm -hmm. I went to the state to visit my dad and mm -hmm. then I sat on the passenger seat mm -hmm. and then he was driving. Man, I felt so good. I felt so good. I'm like, damn, because I just, I just think about the way I raised my, ki my child, right? Involvement and stuff. I'm like, this is the first time. In my entire life, I sat beside my, my father, mm -hmm. and then he was driving, and we were talking. As an like, adult. As an adult, mm -hmm. as friends. We were talking about even past. We were, we were even talking about girls, you know? That's how, <laughs> that's how the intense, you know what I mean? We were t me and my dad, we were even talking about big booty and stuff like that, you know? So, I, like, you know, I, I, <laughs> I feel good, you know? I'm telling you, like, like you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, yes. Like, yes, you know, finally. But anyways, um, let me go back to topic, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, it does... The communication mm -hmm. it's really 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 important mm -hmm. so for example so I, I went to my 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 first um, kids um, mom because mm -hmm. I know the relationship was not working out you know what I mean because uh, like it's not like it wasn't bad but it's just at the time I just want to do me right mm -hmm. I just want more focus being the father not as a husband or probably a partner right because uh, I don't think I was mentally prepared uh, for that, right? Mm -hmm. So we kept going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm like, no work, this is not helping out, you know? So again, before I went there, and I prayed, and I sat her down, where we both sat in the living room, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, guess what? I'm like, being in a relationship, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 
to put you in this position mm -hmm. that I'm not going to be part of this, mm -hmm. but I just want to be part of my kid's life. And then let's raise them kids together with respect mm -hmm. as a co-parent and communication. And then she was like, oh, let's involve the kid. Like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. they're, they're too young. Their brain is more fragile. Mm -hmm. So that's the mistake most parents make. when Let the kids be kids. Absolutely. They don't have to know anything. Yeah. I'm like, guess what? I'm like, let's be co-parents mm -hmm. and raise them kid. If I was, then I'm going to create a toxic environment. For so that toxicity, I, yeah. don't, I don't want my child to see that. Because every day, argue and stuff like that. This guy want to go out, want to party, wants to be on that kind of stuff and work. And then that actually helps. So, so what I hear you say then is that even though you were not able to parent your children as a couple, yes. you were able to find a way to negotiate co-parenting in a 100%, healthy way. 100%. In the benefits, hundred percent, and of the children, hundred percent. Like I'm involved, hundred percent. Always Wonderful. there. We communicate. Like, like sometimes she even felt jealous. Like, oh, the kid loved me more than her. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> they, they, they still your kid because I involved. Like, Wonderful. I spend time with my. I really, really spend time with my kid because mm -hmm. I know I could be that, that great, you know. Okay. And that, like that communication, like it's good for both parents to work with each other, not against each other. Right. Because mm -hmm. uh, no, no disrespect to the mother again. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They are too emotional. Mm -hmm. And we are lot more logical. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you guys work against each other, mm -hmm. that's a big problem. Step number one, mm -hmm. the child starts seeing the mom being emotional. Mm -hmm. The mother, your emotion abuse your child mm -hmm. without knowing it. Because you explain to your, your son yes. what's going on. Your dad is this. Your dad is that. Mm -hmm. That got stick into their brain. Next thing you know, that son wants to go out to be a man, to provide. And the streets, it's not always guilt. Because I've been there. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like mm -hmm. to be in the streets. Mm -hmm. When I got my child, a change in narrative. Mm -hmm. So please, parents, work together against each other for the betterment of your child. Oh, okay. This, this, this is emotional. Mm -hmm. You yeah. both, you both. Thank you for all of those perspectives. I think that the fathers are hearing you both. And I think even for fathers that are not physically present, because there was a time when my dad and I were not in the same country. I don't think there was a single day that I felt my dad's um, absence. Because even though he was not physically there, I could tell anybody, if you offend me, my dad is coming for you. The people who were like raising me knew if they did anything out of the ordinary, my mm -hmm. dad will know about it, mm -hmm. right? And he played his role so um, accurately that I knew my father was in my life. Yes. And I looked forward to that time when the two of us would, would like reconnect and I get to feel that physically presence of his. Time is very important. Right. Um, can I intercept you for a bit? Because I want to tell a little, a little bit story about that time like he um, was mentioning, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, the dad was not there because they both were living in two different countries, but mm -hmm. he um, he always phone check and then you felt like he was there, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. at one point, uh, that was 20, um, 2021, mm -hmm. okay, um, I went out of town working. You know, my boy, you know, he was smart. He's, he's, he's smart, right? Like a student, but and uh, lately, start getting B's and C in school, right? Quiet, shy. And the teacher um, called the mom and then um, and me as well. And I'm like, you need to talk to your son. I'm like, okay, cool. And then, um, of course, me and him went for a ride. I'm like, what is going on? What is wrong with you? Like, I want to go so ash. And at the time you told me, it was like, no, 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 no. Just be calm. Mm -hmm. And then listen to him and mm -hmm. see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is going on? And then he's like, well, I don't see you around as often as I used to. Um, cause you're always out of town working. Uh, I'm like, well, I gotta work so I can make more money to buy you guys this, buy you guys that. I mean, you know, cause you guys love the shoes and stuff. Because of course I love to dress well. So I want children my, 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 my children <laughs> expensive. <right? laughs> 
And then um, he told me, how much do you make an hour? Mm -hmm. um, like, well, $45 an hour. And then he's like, well, um, I have 40 bucks in my account. If you give me $5, just spend one hour with me. Oh. Man, I broke down. It's like, especially on the weekend, I want to play with you. I want to go out with you, play basketball and all that kind of stuff. Because you're my best friend. And knowing you go out of town for 21 days or two weeks, like, I don't feel good. And I broke down. I was like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I will change that. And then call my office. I'm like, no more out of town. I want to involve more in my son's life, yeah. in my children's life. Ever since, he's been doing great. And we're back together as Aww. a friend. Look so at that time. beautiful testimonial. Very, very, very important. Thank you. Time. Thank you. And I think anybody who knows you would say that when it comes to your involvement in your children's lives, they don't question that one bit. Because not only are you physically present, but you make sure that they experience all there is to experience within this part of the world mm -hmm. with you, Yes. right? So I think you're being a really good role model in that aspect to a lot of fathers out there. And thank you. Thank you for doing that. And yeah. I see that similar sort of like um, yes. um, aspect with you too. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I think we've touched on the communication piece as well as we were talking about that um, previous question. So to round this up, we see in the diaspora especially, fathers tend to walk away when things get heated. Now, I'm not blaming fathers, but we see a lot of, um, especially within our community where mothers tend to be the parents that is left taking care of that child because father is like well if you don't want me to get involved because of different things i'm gone what can we say to fathers out there to sort of like reduce some of those tendencies a little bit and i know we've touched a bit about the importance of that but if they say hey she will not allow me or the government will not allow me what can we say to our African fathers in the diaspora and even in our countries of birth about that? Whoever wants to go first. <coughs> well, I think, um, you know, we, we have said it again and we are going to repeat it again here that it is always very important for both parents to be involved in the life of their children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not only beneficial to the children, it's also beneficial to the parents. Mm -hmm. Because if you see your child failing, if you yeah. see your child going into activities that are not right, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. What is going through your mind and your heart? Mm -hmm. You are carrying that load of stone that you shouldn't be carrying. And so that's why it's important for both parents to get involved. Mm -hmm that one cannot give a value yeah. to it. And um, again, like uh, my colleague here said, Captain has mentioned, it is very important to parent together, yeah. but not to go against each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to go against each other, find your own time on your own issues, but don't carry your issues to the children. Yeah. Absolutely. Because what has happened here is parents work, I mean, dads work away yeah. feeling devalued. Dads yeah. walk away yeah. that they don't feel they are in their place Society. of authority. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Parents walk away as soon as, or dad walks away as soon as mom begins talking to the children negatively about, about that. dad. Yeah. And then dad also responds talking negatively mm -hmm. to uh, the children about mom. Mm -hmm. The environment has been created is no more conducive for anybody to hang around. It is. Mm -hmm. The other thing is um, they say if you don't know where you are coming from, you may not know where, where you are going. going, going. Mm -hmm. And so in some of these countries, like where I come from, from South Sudan, mm -hmm. we don't have this social welfare. Right. We don't have something known as child That's support. support. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we, it, it, resources tend to tear us apart. Yeah. And so it's not all the moms that hang on there because of these reasons, but some of the moms really then take the place of teenagers yeah. in the family or the dads do take that as well mm -hmm. because now their eye is on what is coming out from the you know child tax benefit mm -hmm. 
Right. What is coming out from the uh, 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 child support? Mm -hmm. And so plus what I'm working, and then I'm somehow here. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. Mm -hmm. So these attitudes, we need to take it away from our mind and know that our center of relationship and marriage was the child. Right. And so if it is the child, each of us need to play a role of being a parent right. so that these children can grow rightly. But if we are focused on resources, we are focused on our own lives, yeah. it becomes a problem. Absolutely. Right. I, I, we always love when there's one of our uh, fellow community members who always said when we go for a barbecue, people eat the barbecue, but he piles a little aside and when it's done, and then he tells people that, you know, my, my parent or my parents didn't have this for me. So I'm trying to pay back what was passed. <laughs> and so it is what we seem to be falling into here. Yeah. That when I was a teenager, I did not do this and I want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I was not provided this and I want to try. And now we are taking over from our kids. Right. We are just driving over them. Mm -hmm. We don't care about the, their success. We don't care about their future. Mm -hmm. But if we are caring, we will definitely be involved, we'll be present, we'll be engaging in communication, regardless of our relationship with, with my partner. Yeah. If we are living together, great. If we are not living together, that does not take away the greatness and the responsibility we should equally give to these children. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <sighs> well, Mr. Joseph, that? I've said it all. I'm just going to elaborate um, um, on that. And um, it's probably a, there are two aspects. Mm -hmm. And the, the one is the emotional side, you know. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, um, it's emotional abuse that these men go through, you know. Because um, realistically, especially uh, the new school dad, and uh, we go through um, psychological trauma. Okay. But society intend to ignore that part, that aspect, because just be a man. Mm. And society just intend to focus and listen to more of the woman emotional stories, you know. So um, that is why some men don't have that mental capacity to just stick around because society has choose to just kick the man out and just focus more on the woman. So whatever pressure. a woman said out there, because women are emotional. They know how to blackmail. They know how to put one or two things Ouch. in place and then make <laughs> everybody believe what they're saying. So some men don't have time for that because mm -hmm. they know physically strong. Not every man is like me because for me, I love the drama. Like I always see, I can stay <laughs> and fight all day just to be there. Because I'm like, even one of my, um, my, uh, my, uh, my child mom even grabbed a knife one time. It's like you come close, I will stab you. You know what I mean? Like this child is not yours. I'm like, really? You want to show that part? I will show you I'm from Kisi Christian. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. You just read. So you know what I mean? Like I drift back and I sound like, what is she thinking? I, at the time, I didn't come across this word, a postpartum depression. Because mm -hmm. I think that is where us father needs more education in. Mm -hmm. Postpartum depression is real. Um, sometimes this woman go through that a lot. I wish back then I knew about that. I got more educated, educated in that aspect. Okay. Don't run away from your child, man. Because mm -hmm. if you have the mental capacity to be with this woman in a toxic uh, uh, relationship mm -hmm. for over five, ten years, being with the same woman, and you can allege and pledge your loyalty to that woman, but still go through emotional mm -hmm. and through, like all that aspect, still you stay in that relationship. Mm -hmm. What makes you think you can just walk away from your children? Because mm -hmm. It's really what they say, that something must kill a man. Mm -hmm. It's a woman. That's you intend to stay in that relationship, that toxic relationship, mm -hmm. where you have the audacity to, to walk, walk away. away from your children. Mm -hmm. See, when my child turns 18, you or she gonna come look after me. That's wrong. That is wrong. There's always a means, especially we live in this country. Mm -hmm. The law, uh, to social welfare, if you really want to be in your child life, mm -hmm. it's possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just go the other way around. Mm -hmm. Or maybe come to me for advice. I would do uh -huh. advice you. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So Wonderful. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both very much. Um, you've heard from our amazing fathers, 
um, that are here to join us today. You've heard from a beautiful young lady and gentleman about their own messages to Father. And on behalf of myself and the uh, rest of my um, guests here, we, we want to wish all fathers a happy Father's Day. And Daddy, for every time that you stood by me, for every time that you asked me to go one way, I went the other way, but you were still there waiting for me to like walk me through that journey. I really do appreciate you. Thank you for being the father that you are. And I pray to God that God will continue to guide and protect you and reward you for making time for not just me, but all of your children. Until season two, Sabe, Sandim Din. The Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong and harmonious world.